Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to talk briefly about black holes and also explore the new model of a black hole in Space Engine because as you can see it has become a lot more beautiful. I'm also going to show you something really really terrifying so if you're watching this at night you may want to come back tomorrow morning. If you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to click that subscribe button right now. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so this right here is Sagittarius A, which is the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous um, in the new 9.80 space engine. And it's basically a lot more realistic now than it has ever been. But you're about to see it in a very different view. And here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. This is actually an idea I got from uh, someone on Reddit to basically decrease the exposure level to the maximum, to the point where basically you have no more exposure. And uh, this would, of course, turn uh, any black hole or any, uh, any other bright object very, very, very dark. Now, this actually, to me, looks absolutely terrifying. And we're going to come a little bit closer. So brace yourselves. Now, if this actually is uh, a real black hole somewhere out there in the universe, it might actually look like this, especially if it's in a very dark sort of uh, part of universe where there's really nothing else there. But this is absolutely amazing and also terrifying at the same time. I'm trying to uh, position myself so that we can actually see it a little bit better. But anyway, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, some of the knowledge of black holes that we currently have and uh, so, uh, some of our understanding of these beautiful, terrifying th um, objects. Or are they objects? I don't really know. I don't think anybody does. They are definitely a phenomena that will one day hopefully help us understand the universe a lot better because uh, I, I personally believe that as soon as we can actually understand what's going on with these things, uh, we'll have a grasp on life to the point where we'll probably know a lot more than we currently know about ourselves and the universe, of course. Now, so this uh, these objects were originally predicted by Einstein back in 1916. But he, of course, didn't really call them black holes. Uh, this term originated something like 50 years later, and it was actually originally coined by someone by the name of John Wheeler uh, in 1967. He was actually a very famous astronomer. And so he was the first to actually describe these as black holes. Now, what we're going to do right now is actually uh, possibly move away from this, and we're going to take a look at one of the first black holes ever discovered. Actually, not, not, not one of the first. It was officially the first black hole to be ever discovered, although there was a bit of a controversy between two very famous people. And these two famous people were, of course, uh, Stephen Hawking uh, and uh, Kip Thorne. Kip Thorne is actually the person who was responsible for the super realistic representation of black holes in the movie Interstellar. He's a very famous scientist as well. And basically what they argued about is this black hole that I'm about to show you called uh, Cygnus X1. They argued uh, whether it was a black hole. So Kip Thorne said that it was and Stephen Hawking said that it wasn't. And uh, by 1976, I believe, it was actually proven that it was a black hole. And only in 1990 did Stephen Hawking finally admit that, okay, yeah, I was wrong. Anyway, let's, get, let's actually go take a look at it. You can easily find it in uh, Space Engine by typing Cygnus. And it's actually in this system right here. There's two objects, and you'll find out why in a second. I'm actually going to reset my exposure for a second. Oh boy, this is really bright. Hopefully I didn't blind you with this. But this is what the actual uh, black hole looks like in Space Engine if you actually, if you have your exposure at a, at a regular level. So let's go to Cygnus X1. We're going to jump to it and it's actually a binary system. And there are two objects here. And uh, the first object, as you can see, is a very, very bright blue luminous supergiant. And if you look really closely, you'll see that there's another object right here. Now, this is not a star. This is actually the black hole that we're talking about. Um, you can kind of see their orbits if you click this button right here. And Cygnus X1 is essentially the first official black hole we have discovered. It is not very far away from Earth. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I check the distance here, um, Earth is approximately 2100 uh, parsec away or something like 7000 light years away. So even though we can't really see the black hole itself, we definitely see this star and um, the effects that this black hole has on this star. But anyway, let's actually approach it and let's take a look at it as well. And here it is. Here is the beautiful black hole Cygnus X1 
A. Now, this uh, is uh, actually not in real time, but this is. And as you can see, it still um, has its accretion disk spinning really, really fast. This is because this is actually what's known as a stellar sized black hole. It's only about 16 masses of the sun. And so uh, here, things uh, spin really, 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 really fast. And we're going to approach it a little bit closer just to take a look at it. I'm also going to slow down time so you can actually see um, the spinning accretion disk. Now, if you were to approach this black hole so that close as I am right now, you would currently basically be stretched into uh, what's known as uh, a space spaghetti and you would very likely die. With supermassive black holes, it's a little bit different. You can actually approach them relatively close, but here you would already be dead. And so these types of black holes are actually almost everywhere. We, we think that there might be even up to a billion of these in our galaxy right now. We just haven't found them. But uh, there's quite a lot of these uh, stellar mass black holes pretty much everywhere. Now, except for stellar black holes and supermassive black holes, which we just uh, saw, there's also something called intermediate uh, black hole. Now, these are actually still kind of theoretical because we may have only discovered one of them. Um, there is a, a galaxy called... NGC, I'm going to see if, if it's actually here, NGC 2276, and inside this galaxy, somewhere out there, we found an intermediate black hole. Now, I don't think it's actually present in this game right now. Uh, it's called NGC 2276-3C, uh, uh, which is not an object on this list, but somewhere in this galaxy that's about 200 million light years away from us, there is an intermediate black hole that's about um, 10,000 masses of our sun. Now, we think that these uh, particular black holes are formed when essentially a star cluster collapses into a black hole. Not just one star, not just two stars, but like something like 100,000 stars collapse and create these uh, black holes. But when it comes to the black holes in the center, the supermassive black holes, they are formed in a very mysterious way. There's actually quite a lot of theories about how they form, but uh, I believe one of the more prevalent theories is that they were there from the beginning. They are so-called primordial black holes. They were there from the start of the universe. They were always there. Now, another interesting thing about these supermassive black holes is that uh, when the... Um, let me just actually show it to you first. When the matter um, enters the black hole, some of it actually gets bounced off the event horizon and creates uh, these uh, particle jets that basically uh, move away from the black hole in two directions. And these particle jets are, uh, they're, well, first of all, they're fascinating, but they're also responsible for some of the brightest objects in our universe. The so-called quasars and blazars are essentially that. They're basically super, super massive black holes some, uh, in some other galaxies that are kind of pointing toward us, like in this fashion, essentially, uh, and their particle jets are aimed directly at us. And they're so bright that um, we can see them from billions of light years away. Now, another really fascinating thing related to black holes is actually in regards to quantum mechanics. Now, um, there is something called Hawking radiation. Actually, Stephen Hawking came up with it uh, when he was explaining how quantum mechanics may affect black holes. So what he basically suggested is, let me just come closer to the event horizon so I can actually explain it to you in a little bit more detail. And so you can actually visualize it. We're going to turn this back into this terrifying black hole that you saw before. And we're going to also approach uh, the event horizon a little bit closer here. So um, in quantum mechanics, um, there are particles and antiparticles, which are basically created at all times. Um, they're essentially matter and antimatter. And it's created everywhere at all times, and uh, then it also may create some energy. Uh, but basically, this is the main principle of um, quantum mechanics, that um, particle and antiparticle can combine and create energy, or sometimes energy may create particle and antiparticle. Well, black holes, of course, have a lot of energy, and so they also create these particles and antiparticles. But sometimes, sometimes, one particle, or I guess just a particle, might be created on the inside, but the antiparticle may, might be created on the outside. And when this happens, one of them essentially falls into the black hole, but one of them escapes. And because of this escape and because of the connection of particle and antiparticle, the uh, actual black hole loses a little bit of itself. It loses a little bit of mass, it loses a little bit of its, I guess, energy. And due to this loss, 
With time, black holes will actually disappear. They will eventually evaporate, and this is what we refer to as Hawking radiation. Now, it's a very interesting and fascinating um, idea, and we're going to talk a little bit more about it when, um, when I talk a little bit more about black holes, because I actually want to cover this topic a little bit more. But I guess for now, what you need to kind of understand is that um, sometime in the future, in r like really, really, really far future, all of these dangerous, scary looking black holes in our universe will essentially disappear. Now, whether it's going to happen before the end of the universe or whether it's going to happen sometime uh, before the end of the universe is another question. But theoretically, even the supermassive black hole in the center of our, of our galaxy is one day basically going to uh, completely disappear and there is going to be nothing left. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. There's going to be more black hole videos coming sometime soon. And we're going to talk about some very exquisite and very interesting ideas that some of you actually suggested in one of the um, previous uh, videos under the comment box. If you have more suggestions, if you have more cool ideas, please post them because I'm definitely going to talk about them in one of the future videos. And if you still haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe because there's more videos coming in the future about space, science, math, and of course, video games. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye-bye. And you may have wondered what our galaxy looks like at the center of the galaxy if you actually increase the magnitude, essentially make this a very realistic representation. This is essentially what it looks like, because there's quite a lot of stars orbiting around the central black hole, and is, it is absolutely fascinating how much stuff there is here in the center. This is absolutely amazing.